Our first guest tonight is a six-time Emmy winner and recent Kennedy Center honoree whose voice is beloved by children and their parents all around the world. He's back as Mike Wasowski for season two of Monsters at Work. It premieres Friday on the Disney Channel and May 5th on Disney+. Plus. Please welcome Billy Crystal. <laughs> Pleasure to have you here, and thank you for helping cure my cousin Mickey of her fear of pumpernickel. That was very nice of you. <laughs> she, that was so much fun. But we talked about it. You're like, she's not going to believe this. We and started said, doing uh, right before you left for Japan. Yeah. And I said, I, I know it's uh, April 1st, and I'm on the show. Is there a prank we can do? And I wasn't familiar with the, what you've tortured her with in yeah, the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so we, we talked about this narcolepsy idea, and I said, well, I could do that, and then so on and so forth. But I said, but she's not going to, she's not going to believe this. And he kept saying, yes, she yeah, will. Yeah, will. <laughs> and she didn't, she's delightful, and it was a lot of fun. She is delightful. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun for us. I'm sure. Are you a prankster in general? Um, once in a while, I, you know, the, uh, the worst one, I, well, actually, it was the best one, you say it was the worst one. It was the most difficult one. Years ago, years ago, we were shooting Throw Mama from the Train. Um, and Danny DeVito is the co-star and director, and he was, he was amazing. So we're shooting out about 45 minutes north of L.A. in uh, Indian Wells. And there's uh -huh. like four miles of train track, and they have a train so we could actually shoot some stuff on the train. So the director of, of photography is a very odd man named Barry Sonnenfeld. Oh, yeah, sure. Who became yeah. a great director. Yeah. Well. And Barry's very quirky, and he's strange. And he had, a, like, a Trans Am, <laughs> and I had my first midlife crisis car. Uh-huh. What was it? It was a little black Porsche convertible. Okay. All right. <laughs> Cliché. <laughs> and he kept saying, it was a five-speed, and I had just come from a, a Tiptronic uh, VW Bugs, which was, like, automatic, and you just, you know... And so he said, you don't know how to drive that car. <laughs> I said, yes, I do. No, I saw you pulling in. You don't know how to drive that car. Why don't we race from Indian Wells to the border of Santa Monica tonight after work, and whoever wins takes it with the other guy out for dinner. I said, great. So they're off shooting stuff, so I go to a special effects guy. And I, said, I said, Tommy, can you rig something in his ignition that... <laughs> I got DeVito to say, gentlemen, start your engines. So when we do that, it, something will happen to it and it won't work and I can take off. He said, you got it, boss. Because <laughs> you're always boss. I mean, sure. You know, you got it, boss. So they pull our cars up. They finish shooting. He comes over. And he's wearing a coonskin cap, which he <laughs> no, always he's wears. Not. He's like, so, yes, he's Driving did. a Trans Am and he a coonskin so cap. He was so odd. And he said, all right, you're going down. And I said, well, we'll see. We get in the car. Danny's got a megaphone. Gentlemen, <laughs> start your engines. And boom, and his car explodes. <laughs> boom! This big smoke bomb they built into the car. It didn't hurt the car, but it just exploded, and I just, <laughs> and I just took off. <laughs> and, and that was the best one. So he bought me dinner. That was yeah. the best oh, one. Oh, so he, did he not know what you'd done? But not till it exploded. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, an explosion is always solid in a prank. Yeah. Well, you've been to Japan, I would presume, yes, yes. in your many travels around yeah. the world. What did you think? Were you as taken by it as well, I was? Well, I didn't, like, you know, talk about the bathrooms all the time. But you they're know. the greatest. <laughs> yeah, no, they are the greatest. They are the greatest. But I was there a long time ago, and it was still... Are you very jet-lagged? It's a rough trip back. Yeah, I'm a little bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, any international travel, if you do it, folks, it, it's... Your bowels are confused. They go, now? Is it now? <laughs> now. I'm not ready. Maybe a little bit later. Um, but it's an amazing place. Um, the Ginza. Where'd you go? Uh, yeah. We, oh, we, Ginza, we were in Tokyo. Yeah. Was, a, it was unbelievable. Yeah. But then we took the, the bullet train, which goes 180, we went on that 180 too. miles an hour. And yeah. you don't feel a little, thing. Yeah. Out to Kyoto. Right. We did Which that is too. a very beautiful, calm, mystical kind of place. And we checked into this hotel, which is hundreds of years old. And you sleep on tatami mats on the floor. 
And the manager comes over as we're checking in. There's beautiful geisha girls every place. I mean, it's like really, it's real ancient Japan, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And he comes over to me and says, Mr. Crystal, welcome. Uh, I'm going to give you a gift. I said, no, you don't have, no, no, no. In your room, you will see when you check in, there is going to be a little area in the middle of the room that is uh, lined with kimono, uh, beautiful fabrics, and, and it is a massage uh, mat on the floor. So I want to give you a massage that you will never forget. <laughs> I'm going to send someone to your room. Oh, I thought he was going to no, give No, that's what I did. Uh, I said, well, <laughs> you I would forget. <laughs> And it will be massage. With, and he stared at me like, this is going to be dangerous. Uh-huh. So I get to the room, and I have his instructions. It says, get into the tub. There's an old wooden tub at 4 o'clock. Till 4.15, you're soaking these bath salts. Get out of the tub at 4.15. Get into the special robe. And at 4.20, there'll be a knock at the door. And the masseuse will be there for the massage that you will never forget. Wink, wink. <laughs> So I get, oh no, it's one room. So Janice and I get oh, in. Oh, so Janice, Janice was there. Janice is with there, you. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I say, how do you politely say, get out of the room? Yeah. So, so she goes on the other side of the thing, says, good luck. Uh -huh. One of those, good luck. <laughs> so I get in the tub. I get out of the tub. I put on the thing. And I'm just waiting, knock at the door. I look down. I go, don't even think about it. <laughs> I'm expecting, I'm expecting this beautiful young geisha girl. I open it up and there's a, a very old woman, sort of bent a little bit like this, and she's blind. And I go, hello. And she just walks by me, just pushes her way by me, knows the room apparently. And I follow her and she goes, massage. And I go, yes. So she finds her way through the robes. I follow her in. I've got this robe on. She goes, down. <laughs> so I get on my knees, and I go, uh, belly or back? Belly. So I get on my belly, and she gets next to me. I go, robe off? No. She's like, <laughs> and she feels my body with her fingers, and it's like all over my legs, my feet, back, back, and she goes, begin. And she starts to massage me, Jimmy like it's supersonic speed. Da -da -da -da. And she's humming as she does it. <laughs> and I'm laying there going, what, what is that? <laughs> what the f 40 minutes of this high speed thing. She finishes, she gets up, she goes, finish. I, I get up and she goes, goodbye. And she walks out. And Janice comes in and says, what the hell was that? <laughs> and I said, I don't know, but he's right. This is a massage I'll never forget. <laughs> and it was, it was fantastic. Was it? It's, I love deep tissue kind of massage and athletic. Yeah. It's never touched my skin, and it was, it was a singular You know what? Massage. Let's take a commercial break. I'll give you a little rub down during All the All right, pretty good. All right, Billy okay. Crystal is here. We'll be right. right, Sully? <clears throat> That's me. Thank you for coming to our presentation. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you for coming. <gasps> I think these are in the wrong order. <laughs> Good one, Sully. Classic note card mix em up. One of the many laugh techniques we use over at Monsters, Inc. Hi, I'm Mike Wazowski, senior co-president and chief executive vice deputy administrative director of comedy resources management, which is what it says on my parking spot. <laughs> <clears throat> that is uh, Mike and Sully from season two of Monsters at Work. John Goodman, of course, your partner on that. Oh, yeah. We, um, this is the second season. Right. And first of all, John and I are there, and we love working with each other. And it's, and it's, a, it's a great group of, of guest artists who we have is, this year. Who else? Is Henry on? Winkler, Aubrey oh. Plaza. Um, uh, Nathan Fillion, Bobby Moynihan from uh, uh, Sorry, SNL, yeah. um, Bowen Yang from SNL, Ali Wong, um, and uh, Jennifer Coolidge, among all the other stars oh, that'll be there. It? It's a good yeah. lineup. And the shows are great. Yeah. You know what's great about them is, it's, you know, 
the, the original movie, Monsters, Inc., was 23 years ago now. Jeez. And so, yeah, so the kids who grew up loving that movie are now parents. And showing it to them. So they can yeah. sit there with these kids and, and get, uh, you know, new juice from these characters now. I want to ask you about the, um, you received the Kennedy Center Honor, which is a uh, very rare, I mean, there are a lot of Emmys. There are a lot of Oscars, et cetera, but there are very few Kennedy Center honors handed out. That was in December. What was that day, or the couple of days, really like Well, yeah, Well, it was an amazing experience because uh, you don't ever think it's going to happen. And you don't? Is that true? Because I feel like for you, it would be like, of course it's going to happen. No, you, I never take anything for granted or, you know, you sometimes you say, oh, gee, that would be nice, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I got the call in April... And you're not allowed to say anything until it's announced on, on television in, in June. So I had all of this time to just, you know, just hold it in. And Jan Janice and I were the only ones who knew about it. And when I first was called, I got very emotional about it. Mm -hmm. Because it's a real, you know, um, reflection on your body of work. But also I just, I just flashed on my life and how it all started and my, my career and the, the, the chance of being brought home in the family that I was brought home with parents who loved comedy and my dad turning on the TV late at night for, for my brothers and I so I could watch Sid Caesar and that was the golden age of comedians on television. So that gave me the spark and then you end up doing it for a career. Yeah, in and front then of the president. You, yeah. yeah, and then, you know, there were two big events. The Saturday event is um, at the State Department, which is hosted by Secretary of State Blinken, who has more advantage miles than anybody that I know. <laughs> and that was a, a beautiful night. That's where you get the actual medallion. Yes, the, uh, yes, it's like an Olympic medal. Yeah, yeah. which I wore into CVS the other night, just because <laughs> I could maybe cut. Might you know, as cut well. Line. And, um, and your you, family was there with you? Yeah, my two daughters and, and, and Janice and, and their wonderful husbands. That's all you really allow. Mm -hmm. And it was just very emotional. And when you get it, I looked at my two daughters uh, who grew, have grown up in my career. And we've done everything together. They're with my wife of now 54 years in a, in a couple of months. Okay? And, and I looked at my daughters and I, and I said, I know what you're, you know, I know what you're thinking. You're looking at me now after all of these years wearing this and you're thinking, who's gonna get that when he's dead? <laughs> And then, then the next day... <laughs> Who is going to get it? Which one of them? I'm, uh, it's a coin flip. <laughs> and then the next day is the uh, gala. Uh -huh. Right, that's the, the And you don't itself. know who's going to present Is you. that true? So you don't know no. who they bring in, the, you, your colleagues, your people from your life? I had some thoughts of, you know, who... And then I only knew, because I bumped them to him uh, in, in the uh, uh, lobby of the hotel, was Rob Reiner uh -huh. and Mark Shaman. You know, the brilliant musician yeah. who I basically, you know, helped get his career started with when Harry met Sally, introduced him to Rob, and he did all the music for that. His first score was City Slickers, and, you know, he's been nominated several times, Tony Award winner, and a brilliant friend. And they would, that's all I knew. So you go to the White House first, and you're, you, you meet the president and the first lady alone in the, in the Oval Office, and that was amazing. He was... Sharp, he was funny, he was not indicted 94 times. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was great, and in the and the other the other four honorees who I can't remember who they are. And um, it's Queen Latifah, Barry Gibb, Renee Fleming, and Dionne Warwick, who I opened for when I first started my career. And here we were getting cow. these awards together. Wow. And then you go to the gala after spending time with the president. And before that, you're, you're introduced in the East Room of the White House on the second floor by the president. And you get an usher who's a Marine in full, like, tails. And he, we're, in the, we're in this uh, room upstairs, in the Red Room upstairs. And he said, Mr. Crystal, you're first because it's alphabetical order. Because usually it's, I'm first because it's sides order, you know, sides places. <laughs> which was a thrill when the polio shot happened in 54. <laughs> I was first. And... You'll take two steps out and make a right turn, and you'll be introduced, and the president will follow the five of you in. And so I take two steps out, I make my turn, you hear music, and they announce you, the, you know, the Kennedy Center honorees, and I'm first, they say my name, and I walk down, and it's usually a very staid kind of event. Yeah. You just walk down the aisle, you take it all in. 
I, I got overwhelmed. I think we have a full And I just, on I just went, yeah. That moment. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, you were really enjoying it. So, and I just, you know, it was a thrill. And then the show, you know, you sit, I was sitting with Queen Latifah and the president and the first lady. And, and then the show was, Mark opened. And then he brought out Lin-Manuel Miranda, who was a total shock to me, uh -huh. who did, when I used to host the Oscars, I would do these musical medleys. And they wrote one together and did it, and it was a oh. killer. And then Whoopi came out and talked about my years on Comic Relief with her and my dear friend Robin. And, and, um, and, then, and then Bob Costas was there, and Jay Leno and I, Jay came, and he, we had started out together back in the early 70s. Wow. And then we were all surprised, and then Rob came out, and the set changed. And they made a whole beautiful set of Katz's Deli, right, from When Harry Met Sally. Yeah. And uh, Rob directed the movie, of course, and he talked about um, I'll Have What She's Having, which was a line I wrote for the movie, and he's talked about that. And then he brought Meg out, wow. who doesn't do these things very often. And she had the line of the night, and she said, you know, there's no one I'd rather fake an orgasm with than Billy. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then, and then to cap it all off, Robert De Niro comes out at the end and he sang It Had to Be You, which was like our theme song from When Harry Met Sally. So the whole thing was just a, an incredible feeling of um, well, How did you feel about it the next day after the That's event? a good question. Um, Janice and, and the family flew back to L.A. and I was going to New York to start filming the series, which I just finished for, mm -hmm. for Apple, if I can say it. Yeah. Um, and I, I decided to drive because when I first started out, I drove every place. I, was, I played these colleges and one-nighters and little clubs and so on. I always drove my little blue Volkswagen around and I drove up just reflecting on, on how it all began. Wow. And, and it was the perfect thing to do because I got... You know, I was, I was very emotional about it. And it's just like, you know, I just turned, I just turned 76 a couple of weeks ago. And, and you start, you think about those things. And I thought, how far, you know, just by chance, I came into that household with that family, with those funny brothers, that era of television, and met... Um, incredible woman who said, go be the comedian I know you can be. Yeah. And that's what I just, I just felt. And you, you got know. your driver's license too, which was important. It was you very know? important. I mean, that's very a big important. deal. We like act very like it's important. nothing, but it's yeah. big, you know? <laughs> well, nobody deserves it more. Congratulations. Well. Billy Crystal, everybody. Season two of Monsters at Work, Friday on the Disney Channel, and May 5th on Disney+. Plus. We'll be back with Jim.